Hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the podcast The Endurance of Labor Laws. I'm your lovely host Leslie Sullivan, and today is episode 141. And today we're going to take a look at the National Football League Players Association. And what I thought about doing since this one is such a large topic because it goes back quite a ways, I thought I would go ahead and do a series on this particular association as well as the NFL. because I'm not a huge NFL person but I definitely learned a lot about the NFL, uh the league, the association and a little bit of the history with this. So I'm not a fan of this association, but I do understand why it was founded. It was founded to protect the players, to protect their pay, their pensions, offer them health insurance, all those good and wonderful things. It's just I think they've gotten off track, which is very unfortunate. But we're going to discuss a lot of things to do with this association and with the NFL, the league in general. So this is going to be a very interesting little mini series within this podcast. So this is definitely going to be a whole lot of new information for me because I'm not a huge football person. There are teams that I like, but I'm not always consistent with my watching of football. So needless to say, I don't have a lot of education on this. So being that I did not have a lot of knowledge, I've been having to do a lot of research and I was surprised at how much history there is to this and it does have good beginnings. I'm just not sure that it's going in the right direction these days. It does concern me, but but before we get started, I want to give a big shout out to my listeners because again as usual, you guys are awesome. I love to see you here online. It's wonderful. So let's see here a big shout out to Nevada, Minnesota, North Carolina, Washington, Pennsylvania, California, Oregon, Virginia, New York, Texas and Oklahoma. In terms of countries, the United States and the Russian Federation. So just a little bit of highlights about the NFL Association. So it's the National Football League Players Association, also known as NFLPA. It was founded in 1956 in terms of the association. The NFL was founded I think in 1920, so it goes back quite a ways and I did not know that. But the NFLPA, their association, uh, their bargaining uh, agency, I guess you could call them, it is a trade union. Its legal status is a 501c5 organization. It is headquartered in Washington DC of the United States, so basically the swamp. There's a lot of corruption there unfortunately in our nation's capital. Um the good thing about this association is they are only located in one location and that is in the United States. So it's nice to see that they are not a international labor union because again as I've said times past other countries don't understand our labor laws. And they really have no business telling us what to do just like we don't have any business telling them what to do because no other country has our economy, our democracy, our liberty, our freedoms, our constitution. So It's kind of like we really can't be telling them what to do and they for sure should not be telling us what to do because we're not socialist. I mean, I know Europe, they tell each other what to do all the time, which is why none of their countries are very successful in terms of their currency, their banking system, um their politics or their rules, laws and regulations. Like they have issues far above and beyond what the United States has to deal with. So, needless to say, we should not be taking orders from other countries. So, Anyway, um in terms of membership as of 2019, they had 2423 active players or associates and then in terms of associate members or excuse me, former player members, they have 8751, so quite a few. Their current president is JC Treader. Their executive director is D Morris Smith. Very interesting there. This organization does have a subsidiary, so basically like a corporation. Um so they do what's interesting about this, I'm not a fan of this because it kind of strikes me as odd. They are a trade union or a labor union, but they also have their own little corporation. So it's like they're trying to have a foot in in the public sector, but then also in the private sector, and you can't really do both. You're either one or the other. So it's kind of hypocritical here a little bit. but their corporation that is their subsidiary is the NFL Players Inc and we'll talk about that later that will be a separate podcast and then this association has affiliations with the AFL CIO 
Now I'm kind of surprised by that and here's why. The AFL CIO, even though they'd say and do things I don't always agree with, for the most part, the AFL CIO um has affiliations with good labor unions and trade unions that really focus on helping um lower income workers have better jobs and have more money. Unfortunately, when it comes to the NFL, um these players are not poor. They may not have had a lot of money way back in the day like in the 20s, 30s, 40s and 50s, but now they're millionaires. So it's like they don't really need a labor union or a trade union anymore to represent them because they have accomplished their goal. Unfortunately, it's kind of one of those things where they they got their pie so to speak, but now they want even more pie. Well, this is the only labor union or trade union I've come across where they actually did help their workers become millionaires. But unfortunately, a lot of the millionaires um within the NFL, they don't obey the law. They break the law. They skirt the law, and they very much can't afford to have really uh, powerful attorneys that can help them get out of whatever crimes they commit. It is a problem within the, within the NFL, and I'll give an example here. Um just off the top of my head, I would say domestic violence is a big issue with these NFL players. Now, I don't know if they have substance abuse problems. I don't know if they're using steroids. I don't know and I don't care. Um domestic violence, there's no excuse for that because it's always women and children that are being beaten. They're not beating themselves. And there's one particular example, I can't think of the player's name or what team he was on, but there's actually video footage of him and his girlfriend where they get into an elevator at a hotel and i guess they get into a little tiff like a little argument it's it's a nothing but this football player he punches his girlfriend in the face like knocks her out cold it was so cruel it was so sick it turned to my stomach when i saw this footage back in the day it wasn't that long ago but um it was just really disturbing and what was even more disturbing was Her body is laying there in the elevator and he drags her body out. So he and his girlfriend disappear um from the camera angle, which was really disturbing to me. And here's the thing, if that had not been caught on camera, this guy would have never been called out on his behavior, never. Because they hardly ever get called out on it. Unfortunately, well fortunately I should say, it's very fortunate that that guy got caught doing that on that hotel camera because it was reported to the NFL, to the owners of his team and to his coach, and instead of being permanently fired from the NFL, I think he was put on probation or some kind of temporary status or something. They paid the woman off to be quiet, but she had to marry him to do that, so they got engaged and then got married and there was a press release about it. and you see her and um her then husband um you know doing a, a interview with the with the press and it was just shocking to me how quiet she was but she's being paid hush money basically because the NFL doesn't want any problems they overprotect their players instead of holding them accountable for the bad stuff that they do my personal opinion is that if they beat one woman one time they are permanently fired never again can be hired by the NFL or the the other association i think it's the all american i think it's the AAFC the all american football conference or all america football conference you know he, here's one of the biggest issues that i have with the NFL yes these guys are very talented and yes they do deserve to get paid really good money but millionaire status and then they get away with beating their wives punching their girlfriends in the face. I mean, it's really bad. And so, whenever that happened, well, at least when this one happened and, you know, it was released to the press, what was the NFL's response to this? Well, <laughs> it really took me aback. I was watching a football game with my family, and it was like out of nowhere the NFL had like a a public service announcement about the dangers of domestic violence, and they had different NFL players speaking in this commercial and my family and I we just laughed. It was like, are you kidding me? Like you're going to lecture Americans about domestic violence when you guys are the ones who are who are doing this and for the most part do not get caught and then now that one of your players has gotten caught, now you have the nerve to lecture us 
about how horrible, hateful and evil domestic violence is, like that's calling the kettle black. It was so weird. It was just bizarre to me. I did not I I was not expecting that. And then You know, when I was looking at this data in regards to the NFL and regards to their their trade union, now I understand why they did that because one of the things that this association does in terms of trade union status with the NFL, it says it negotiates and monitors retirement and insurance benefits and enhances and defends the image of players and their profession. Well, obviously they do a really good job of that. They pay the women hush money. The guys hardly ever go to jail. They hardly ever get sentenced. It's very difficult for prosecutors and the police to do anything to these guys. It's like they are untouchable. It's bizarre. And yet they get to keep their jobs and they get paid millions of dollars. No wonder they think and know that they can get away with stuff. It's because they can and they do. And it has to deal with this association with the employer with the higher ups with upper management their agents and also the people that do business with uh, business with them like their contracts like for example Nike Adidas and things like that these companies they love to have major i would say very much pro athletes be in their ads and they pay them millions of dollars to do so and and I'm not against them making money that's a wonderful thing I'm all for capitalism because I know from a woman's point of view Capitalism provides the most freedom to females. It just does, hands down. There is no other form of government or economy or business that offers w- women more freedom than capitalism. Because typically under capitalism, you have democracy and you have the right to vote. That means a lot to women. So th- there is the equality. But what sucks about this is that in regards to this trade union, this association and the NFL, they don't believe in equality look at how they treat women then um another game that i saw all the football players either they had on pink shoes or pink shoelaces i was like what is this i was like are are they all getting a little fancy out there i was like what's going on with this well the nfl i guess was trying to prove that they love and care about women so they're they're trying to promote um race for a cure for breast cancer i'm like oh really is that before or after your football players beat their women and that could be their wives their girlfriends their hookers their hoes their prostitutes like really like come on we know they have a very destructive lifestyle and that these men that are nfl players they're not being taught how to be gentlemen That's the problem. Well, where is this mindset coming from? Well, it's in our society, but also it's being promoted by associations like this and by their employer, which is the NFL, as well as the owners of these teams and their coaches. Like who is responsible for this? I mean, yes, they are responsible for their own behavior for sure. But they're not even being held accountable for their own behavior. What does that tell you about the higher-ups? I think it tells us a lot and it's not very good. The higher ups are looking the other way and they're and whenever they come out with one of these commercials saying how much they care about women, oh we want to find a cure or domestic violence is bad. You know what's sad is that the NFL I don't believe they actually care about women and here's why. The only reason why they came out with those commercials or those public service announcements it was because they got caught not caring so it's after the fact it's not before the fact it's after the fact so basically they got caught not giving a rat's posterior about what their players do that harms women so the NFL is trying to save face and here's why they're trying to save face it's because the NFL and everything to do with the NFL whether it's the people they have contracts with or like shoe stores um competitors or you know agents or free agents or even the stadiums and things like that it it's a multi-billion dollar business do you really think they're going to take a risk of firing a very successful or very talented player just because he punched a woman in the face no they're not going to fire him it's ridiculous and they know this stuff goes on 
And I'm not even talking about the football players that have raped women. There was one football player, I can't think of his name. He is one sick dude. Um he actually had an entourage like bodyguards that he hired and they went with him wherever he went, especially to clubs. And what they would do is they would help him pick out a girl that he would want to have sex with, whether voluntary or non-voluntary, usually not voluntary for the woman. And so he would trap her in a bathroom, rape her, force her to do things she did not want to do, and his bodyguards protected him and his image. They did not protect the woman. And in one particular case, her friends were trying to get past his bodyguards. They were trying to get past his posse or whatever to get to her, but they couldn't get through. And here's the thing. The NFL did not fire that guy. It's ridiculous. I'll go back and double check all this, but I remember when this was a scandal and it hit the fan and this guy's behavior was nothing new. So needless to say, suspensions don't work. You know, let me put it this way. Let's say for example, this guy worked at a hospital. I'll just make something up. Let's say this football player is not working in in the NFL, but he works at a hospital. And let's say um he he's friends with buddies in several different departments and he spots a new female coworker. And he wants to have sex with her and he doesn't care whether or not she wants it or not. He's going to target her. And so he targets her at work at a hospital and gets his buddies to stand outside the room where he's actually committing the sexual offense against this woman. That guy would not only be fired, he would be arrested and go to prison. And if ever he was released from prison, he would be on the registered sex offenders list. But does this ever happen to football players? that do these types of things. I'm not saying all of them are like that, but I'm saying that when it comes to this kind of behavior, they don't get penalized and they don't get held accountable the same way that normal everyday citizens do. That is favoritism. We've talked about favoritism in the past. It almost always comes up with every trade union or labor union that we take a look at, and here's the thing. I'm not against labor unions or trade unions. I think they are wonderful at protecting workers' rights. That's wonderful. Where they go wrong is where they create favoritism or nepotism within their organizations. So much so, so much so, excuse me, that their employees and their work are deemed as more important and more valuable than other people and therefore they are given permission to do things that are not socially acceptable within any given society and in fact breaks the law. It's really disturbing to me. But yet this association is all about as it says, it negotiates and monitors retirement and insurance benefits which they do deserve because they have a job, but it says it also enhances and defends the image of players and their profession. So the image of the players and their profession is deemed more important than obeying the law than doing what's right. That that is sick to me. These men basically act like frat guys, but they're not in a frat house anymore. If they were if, if they were ever in one, How is that appropriate? It's not appropriate, but yet they get paid millions of dollars. I I don't understand how so many men can be a part of an association that devalues women like this. I don't get it. What I wish more than anything, I wish that there were more Christians in the NFL. And I'm not saying that there aren't any. I'm saying that it should be obvious when someone is a Christian. It should be obvious that someone believes in God. The only thing that's obvious to me about the NFL and this association is they're overpaid and they do whatever they want. They don't have morals. They typically don't have values. Their their behavior is unethical. Whenever they for the most part when they commit a crime they do not get thrown in jail. They do not get prosecuted. They do not get sentenced. I can only think of one that actually did go to jail. And this guy either he killed somebody or him and his group murdered somebody. I can't remember was it Hernandez? I'm trying to remember his name. 
really talented um, NFL player. But um, he got sentenced uh, for murder or being involved in a murder, and then he committed suicide in prison, which is very unfortunate. I don't think anyone should ever commit suicide. I think that's so wrong. He deserved to go to jail, yes, but taking one's life, I, I think that's horrible. But he's the only one that I can think of off the top of my head that actually got prosecuted for his crime, but only because his crime was so severe. Here's the thing. There are so many other crimes that NFL players commit that are not murder, that are not as serious as that, but they're not being sentenced or prosecuted because they can get away with it. And it's just like, you know, I have to ask, how bad does their behavior have to be before they get called out on something and before they get arrested or go to jail? Does it really have to be something as bad as murder or assault or something i mean does it have to be that bad what this tells me is that this organization has a problem with not mentoring young men and mentoring them in the right way we need more gentlemen to be nfl players not more thugs punks or crooks we need more good men to be football players and see that's a choice You know, how do I describe this? Whenever you wake up in the morning, with you know, maybe you don't realize it or not, but you are deciding with all your with all your decisions all throughout the day, you're making a decision on what kind of individual you're choosing to be. Whether you realize that or not, you are making that decision. And it is your decision. So whenever someone is consistent consistently making poor decisions, that's a character flaw. And when someone has a character flaw, they should be called out on it. And I don't mean in a negative bad way. It should be for you know, for the betterment of that person. Like if you really love somebody, and when I was and when I say love, I don't mean sex per se. Actually, I don't mean that at all. We're talking about helping someone's character. But I'm saying that if you love somebody, like love your neighbor as yourself, if you really care about somebody and you really love somebody, then you will let them know hey your behavior is not appropriate and it needs to stop but this organization is not known for calling men out on this stuff and they need to i'm all for them correcting someone's bad behavior even privately i'm like i'm not for all this this social media stuff and and the press um and journalism I'm not a fan of all this stuff being out in the open because I think it can be very degrading to someone's life and their family I think that whenever someone needs to be corrected they need to be corrected the first time a behavior problem occurs and it needs they need to be corrected privately not publicly but privately but see here's the thing if you don't correct them on the small things then all those things all those little small things add up to a really larger problem in the future. And who wants that? Like that's not right. Like if anything, these guys need to be trained how to be good men. And the first thing I would suggest is for them to read a Bible. They obviously need God. That's why I wish we had way more Christians in you know, in these leagues. in these in these professional athletic roles because unfortunately a lot of young people especially young men they look up to these players it it's it's like they walk on water and that is not how how athletes should be looked at but unfortunately our young people and children they just idolize these guys and it's like you know that's not wise I mean I can't really think of hardly any football players that off the top of my head that I think would make a good mentor although I'm sure a lot of these football players have their own little um charities and you know workshops that they offer and you know that's great and everything but I'm not fooled by it because this organization definitely has a problem with not following the law and yet they're overpaid They get paid millions of dollars 
to play a sport. And yet they have a labor union or a trade union to protect them, their wages, their salaries, their benefits. You know, let me put it this way. If I were to do a poll and go out into the public and ask them, "Hey, do you think doctors and lawyers should have their own labor union and trade union, you know, a labor union that that can help them get more money?" What do you think the average person would say? The average person would say, "Um, don't they already make enough money? I thought labor unions and trade unions were utilized for people that, you know, are are blue collar jobs, really tough jobs." And I'm not against doctors and lawyers, for sure I am not, but I'm just saying that trade unions are typically for the underdog. If you are making millions of dollars, you are not the underdog. Trade unions and labor unions are not for people that are necessarily at a millionaire status. So for me, whenever the NFL complains about things, I typically roll my eyes because I'm like, "Okay, you're a millionaire. A lot of your players break the law one way or another, but yet don't go to jail. Why should I have sympathy for you?" A lot of these players they 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 make way more money than probably 95 or 98% of the population of the United States. And again, I'm all for people making a lot of money. That's great. It's capitalism. I hope they're paying their taxes. That's wonderful. But what I'm saying is that typically trade unions and labor unions are for people who don't make that kind of money. and who probably never will make that kind of money. And here's the thing, typically whenever someone makes that kind of money, they are held to a higher standard of responsibilities. But yet a lot of NFL players, they get away with a lot. and i just find it ridiculous and it's like you know are we really going to continue to look the other way you know what would impress me i would be totally impressed if the american people would boycott the nfl for for an entire season be like we're not going to watch your stuff until you stop hitting and beating women until the domestic violence stops and you know how it stops You fire the players that have hit women. You fire them and you only hire men that do not beat women and children. It's that simple. Raise the standard, don't lower it. See, unfortunately, this labor union, the NFL Association or the the NFLPA, excuse me, they have protected the players so much that it's like they can do no wrong and that's not right because their labor is not more important than anybody else's labor. We are all equals, but yet this trade union has made it very clear they don't think they're equals to anybody. They think they are above everybody. And you can see that in their wages, how they behave and how they are overly protected. by the association, by their organizations, by their team, by their higher-ups, by upper management. And that's a big issue because you know, that's not equal labor. That's not equality. And I don't mean equal as in we should all make 5 million dollars a year, although that would be awesome, but that that's not how any economy works. What I'm talking about with with equal equal labor is that you have equal opportunity and that you have equal status meaning we all have workers rights. But unfortunately, what has happened within this association is that not only do they have workers rights, they have favoritism allotted to them by this association within their organization which is the NFL. And for some reason they they to me it's shocking the stuff they get away with. It's not right. I really wish people would wake up to the fact that trade unions they're not really there to help the workers anymore. They used to back in the day and again, 
This association helped a lot of guys get better pay way back in the day, like way back in the 50s and 60s, and that's a wonderful thing. It helped to protect them when they would get injured. It helped them to provide for their families. It, you know, they provide health insurance, dental insurance. I mean, that's wonderful. But now that pendulum has swung all the way to the opposite side and now it's just a free for all for how much money they can make and basically what all they can do behind the scenes and not be held accountable. That's what I have a problem with. It's not the amount of money. It's how they're being overly protected and they have favoritism within the workplace because you see NFL player NFL players are not in the public sector meaning they they do not work for the federal government or the state government. They are in the private sector. However, their trade union overly protects them just like a federal trade union. That's not right. See, labor unions and trade unions they tend to I'm trying to describe or trying to think of a way to describe this better. Well, there is really only one way to say it. They they promote the workers' rights of their workers, but they make it extreme by promoting favoritism, making it seem like their jobs are more important than everybody else's in the entire United States. That is not democracy. That is a bureaucracy within a democracy, and that's why we have problems with this. Because you know, bureaucrats, they will always pick their favorites and throw away the ones they don't think are important. Which would be you and me and anybody else that's not in their association. I mean, who wouldn't want millionaire status? I mean, that that's a wonderful thing to have. But what I'm saying is that, you know, the more money you make and the more status you have in society, in any given society, the more responsibility you have to do what's right. And a lot of these NFL players totally miss the mark because a lot of them have character flaws. It can be handled and fixed. I mean, it can definitely be repaired, but they have to choose to do that. Management does not encourage them to be good men. Management and upper management encourages them to be the best players at all cost, at you know, at every expense. Do what it takes to win. We don't care what you do in your private life. We don't care what you do you know outside the game they should care and what's interesting is they do have rules about how they are supposed to behave in society and things like that good luck enforcing that they've basically given them permission to do whatever they want whenever they want however they want it's almost like the outback steakhouse slogan no rules just right well you know what when you have no rules it's only just right for the person that doesn't have any morals or values whatsoever and their victims they don't feel like it's great that's why it's so important to have equal opportunity and to have equality within the workplace and here's the thing you cannot just blame the the NFL players themselves because this starts from the top down not from the bottom up It's not the rookies that are causing this problem. The the culture and the issues within their culture within that work environment are already there before the rookies are hired. So you can't blame the the new people that are starting to work there. It comes from upper management. That's why they need to rotate managers. Because it creates favoritism. it creates a bureaucracy. And it's almost like pulling teeth to get them to do the right thing on a consistent basis. The only thing that is consistent with this association and the NFL is that they look the way, sorry, look the other way whenever they get the chance. 
because they value money more than morals, values or ethics. That's why a lot of these players have character flaws. It's because they are not being encouraged to be good Christian men. And here's the thing, if they were encouraged to be good Christian men, they would be even more successful and have a way more positive life because that's one of God's promises to his people. God promises to bless his people, but if you turn your back on God and you hurt other people, you know, God is not going to bless you. God doesn't tolerate that. And you may be thinking, well, Leslie, what if they don't believe in God? Well, that doesn't mean anything. Just because someone doesn't believe in God, that doesn't mean he doesn't believe in them. That's why it breaks God's heart whenever people commit sin like this. I mean, it's it's horrible whenever a woman gets beaten. But I think it's even worse when you have an association that that proactively protects the guy and doesn't really care about the woman or the kids. You know, if it was me, if I was the owner of a team or if I was the the coach of a team and I had a player that had beat his girlfriend or girlfriend or wife, I would totally pull him aside and say, "What are you doing? What is wrong with you? First of all, you're fired, but number 2, you need help." This is disturbing. This is sick behavior. Why would you beat someone who doesn't stand a chance of defending themselves? These guys that beat women, they're cowards. They're thugs and they're cowards. I mean, it's so cowardice to hit someone that physically does not even have you know not even close to the same body strength as you it's a one-sided fight and every man knows that whenever a woman is telling you off or she smacks you or something you just go honey i'm walking away let's take a breather here you just walk away men know that Men know they can hurt a woman. So if if they know that they can hurt a woman, why do they do it? It's lack of character. It's lack of morals, it's lack of values, it's lack of ethics. And here's another thing. I'm not saying that, you know, women are, you know, completely innocent and all that stuff because I've met some crazy ones over the years. But here's the thing. If you're dating a crazy woman, aren't you kind of stupid for doing that? Stop dating the crazies and date a normal woman that you that, that you could actually see yourself marrying because that's the purpose of dating. I kind of feel like these NFL players, they don't know how to date because they're so busy screwing around all the time. Excuse my language. But it's like what do you expect when you're sleeping around? I mean it's it's bizarre behavior, it's grotesque behavior. And then they wonder why they have all these crazy women after them. It's because you're 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 dating them, you're sleeping around on them. If you don't want a crazy woman in your life, don't date her and don't marry her. There are normal women out there. But see here's the thing. Regardless of whether a woman is crazy or not, a man never has permission to punch her in the face. I mean, it's just bizarre to me how how some guys will just give themselves to beat a woman, you know, basically to a pulp. I'm like, there's nothing that woman could have done to to do that. You know, I I think that, you know, in regards to these types of domestic violence situations where the woman is a little nutty or whatever, 
a lot of times she's just trying to blow off steam and unfortunately she's blowing off steam at the very person that has caused the steam. So she's a moron as well because I mean if it was me I would just break up with the guy and just walk away and find someone that doesn't irritate me like that's what a normal person does. But you see here's the thing when you have a toxic relationship there's nothing you can do to make it better like you need to abandon ship on that. Just let it go. Choose peace. Not war, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I mean, I hope that this is good advice for some people. I would think that that these would be normal ways of living. But when I look at the at the NFL and some of the behavior problems, I'm guessing a lot of these guys do not know how to date. And I guess my advice for you is, if you are a rookie in the NFL and you don't know how to date. Pretend like you're living in the 1950s or 1940s. That's how you should date. Treat women with the utmost respect. Always open the door if she's sitting down. You know, you know, get her chair for her, things like that. Don't expect sex during dating. Sex is reserved for marriage. And I am going to say that that's just how it is because that's God's law. Anything that you take out of of marriage, it's basically degraded. Don't do that. Don't do that to yourself or to your to your spouse or to the person that you're dating. You know, dating is supposed to be fun. Sex always complicates dating. Why? Because you're not supposed to be sexually active before you get married. And I understand that that is. Um, probably sounds bizarre for our way of living in our society in the United States at least um but if you want to do yourself a favor and have a a peaceful life have normal dating like really get to know the person have fun but just don't be using your body for pleasure like that that's not what your body is for yes you can do those things when you're married but when you're dating You're supposed to be getting to know the person's heart, their soul, their mind, how they think. That that's the goal. The goal when you're dating is not to get laid. Excuse my language, but it seems to me there are a lot of football players out there that they just keep sowing their oats outside of college. Well, here's the thing, no one should be sowing their oats as they say ever. I mean, what ever happened to chastity for both men and women? What happened to that? You know, what's interesting and I speak from living in the Bible belt, there's all this pressure put on women to be virgins and to have chastity, but there's not any pressure whatsoever put on guys. It's like they can do whatever they want whenever they want. That's the problem. that same attitude and behavior issue is rampant in the NFL and these are grown men like way past the age of 18 and i'm not saying that teenagers should be living that kind of lifestyle either but i'm saying that you know the older you get you know the the better your decision making skills should be but it just seems like because the because the culture is toxic and somewhat pagan within the NFL and this association it's like these men never really grow up they never grew up to be good men they never grew up to be gentlemen that's the reason why they have all these issues and what these men don't realize is that their behavior problem is costing them money and it's also costing them contracts I mean it's destroying their soul and their heart as well but obviously they don't care about that. But I mean you would think they would want to protect their financial assets. Just think about all the football players that have so many baby mamas and now all all their money basically is going towards all these baby mamas that they slept with and got knocked up. 
Stop sleeping around like that. It's stupid. It just it just makes no sense to me. Because you are making your life a living hell by participating in bad behavior patterns. And that's what that is. It is a bad behavior pattern that is rampant in the NFL and in these associations. Because it's like, well, he's talented. You know, he he's going to make millions. I mean, you know, what do we care what he does? My question is, why don't you care what he does? People should care. And people should care about themselves. And let me say this. I'll close with this because I realize I'm 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 going over 45 minutes. There's nothing sexier than to a woman than when a man is a gentleman. Doesn't pressure her for sex, never ask her for a blow job, never tries to get her to buy dinner, never uses her for money or sex or a, a trophy wife kind of situation. I mean just just the fact that a guy can treat a woman with respect there there is I can't describe it but that is just so sexy because it's so rare. That is sad. Treating a woman with dignity and respect used to be common. You know what would impress me is if every NFL player believed in God and was a good Christian man. was a good christian husband and is a good christian father that would totally amaze me because it's rare it shouldn't be rare back in the day it was common to be to be a christian nfl player to be a christian nfl husband to be a christian nfl parent now look at what we have We've got baby mamas littered all over the United States. We've got all these kids being born without dads. Now we've got all these lawsuits and the in these custody battles and um just it's ridiculousness. It's horrible. It just makes no sense to me. I would think that if you want to have a better life and to have the best life, put God first. And here's the thing: if you are an NFL player and you're and you're and you are a Christian, and you're thinking, "Well, I'm in a really bad work environment," well, that is a wonderful place for you to let your light shine. If you're one of the few Christians on your NFL team, help lead those other guys that you know to Christ. Help them realize they have value and that Jesus loves them. It's been my experience that whenever I meet especially guys, whenever I meet guys that are skankwads and just sleep around and they use women like that, The reason why they devalue women is because they don't value themselves. Like like they don't understand that they also have chastity, they have purity, they have integrity because they have been trained wrong. All the more reason for it to be a golden opportunity to help these guys realize that their life has value as well and their integrity matters. especially as a man because we need more good male mentors i'm just going to say it women can't do everything just like men can't do everything you know if these nfl players are going to be the idols so to speak for young people especially young men they need to have the best character ever like they need to be of good moral standards and they need to be proud of that i don't understand why christians are not proud that they're christian like i'm happy i'm a christian i'm i'm overjoyed that i gave my life to christ and not only that i rededicated my life to christ 
I'm proud of that because that was a very important decision for me in my adult life. It's the most important decision of my entire life to dedicate my life to Christ. I'm proud of that because it was not an easy decision because I knew I was going against our society. I was leaving one religion and going to another. But I've never felt more happy in my life. I wish more men in the NFL would give their life to Christ and be good role models for our society because I think when you make that kind of money and you are in the news and you're on TV and you're in posters and things like that, I think you have a responsibility to be the best how to describe this, to be the best person you can possibly be. And that may sound like a lot of pressure, but here's the thing, when you give your life to Christ, the pressure's not on you, it's on Jesus and he can handle it because he takes our burdens off of us. So stop trying to do it all and be it all and win it all. Give your life to Christ, he will help you with everything. And I'll say this, There's also nothing sexier than a man that believes in God and is and is not afraid to say that he loves Jesus and he has given his life to Christ. It's it's just wow, that would be an amazing husband right there. Like that is someone I would trust, that's someone I would marry. I mean, it's just women look for that. Women need that. So I encourage you if you are in the NFL give your life to Christ and be who God wants you to be. And if you don't know who God wants you to be, pray about it. He will let you know. And here's the thing. There is no shame or condemnation in Christ Jesus. God loves you. He's not going to talk he's not going to talk down to you or degrade you. I think that's one reason why Christians don't follow Jesus. They think that well he's not going to want me. It's just the opposite. He loves you very much. He wants you in his family. He's not ashamed of you. He wants to walk with you every day of your life. So, needless to say, give God a chance. You know, there's only so much the world can give you before the bottom falls out of it, so to speak. And I'm not saying all life is bad because it's not. If anything, life is a wonderful thing. God gives us life. But I'm saying that. Don't put your faith or trust in the world. Put your faith and trust in Jesus. That's where your faith and trust should be because he's the one that loves you and he's not going to lead you astray. Give God a chance. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Cuz that's what I thought about whenever I was researching this about the NFL and the issues that they have. and that they have had I just thought wow they really need Jesus they they need a wake up call so for sure um if I were to suggest a bible I think I've suggested this one many times uh, it's the new international version which is the NIV version it is leader to reader it's an excellent bible it's a great translation I think you should get that I really do. You can get it on Amazon, you can buy it used or new, whichever the case may be. But I think every NFL player should get one of those Bibles and read it and realize just how much God loves them and wants what is best for them, regardless of what occupation they have. Do your job, do it well, but do it for Jesus. Do it for Jesus and he will bless you. Because he loves you. But I will go ahead and end this podcast, but as usual, until next time, I pray that you're happy, healthy and whole, that you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.